Matt. Where's Matt? Matt's at the computer. Matt, you come on over, but I'll have you go back to that. They are trying to finish their AP portfolio, so Great. they will not be doing this. But okay. I do think that what you have to say will inform the rest of what they're doing. Cool. Because right. she's okay. very inspirational. <laughs> now, how many of you know um, Miss Painter who taught drama? Oh. This is her That's daughter. That's my mom. Oh. Yeah. And so. she is equally cool. So <laughs> I hand you off. Um, she's an amazing person. She has a lot of good stuff to share. So yeah, so I graduated from Hanford High School in 1998, back before you had this nice building. We had really, and I was in yearbook and yearbook photography, woodworking, art, ceramics. So I did all that in high school, and then when I went to college, I kind of just did whatever I felt like while I was there. Um, so can we have light, maybe? So this is actually kind of similar to what we're going to be working on, but this is what I did when my first semester in college, which is working with like letter form to form, like to hand paint a idea in, in the graphic arts. So it's, um, so yeah, if you can see it, if we can get bright here, bright, bright, Ooh. whoa, hey, then you can actually see. Um, so this is, that's what I was doing when I was 18. Um, I took a lot of drawing. I did a lot of very traditional drawing. I studied in Greece for a while. And then I took welding classes and started building really large sculptures, which is what I still do. And this is, these were light up, um, it was a light up lawn flamingo that you could ride in. Um, and that's like, so it's a welded formula that's like wrapped in saran wrap around Christmas lights. It's very functional, very cheap. I make a lot of very inexpensive artwork, and I still do. So it's spring break when I was 19. Um, and I also use a lot of small multiples in my work. So this is, these are all little tiny handmade little puff balls that make up this boat that rides on our Gina bottles. And these, are, these images are so old that these are on slides. So that's why they kind of look like the color's really jarring is that these are actually scanned little plastic things. Um, my first job out of college is I, I made this humongous float where this is still the same skill set. Like I'm still like doing hand painted letter form to make this fake helmet that rode next to this 14 foot cardboard bicycle. And this is like four story tall sculpture. Yeah, this is Portlandia yeah. Yeah. in Portland. She's on the courthouse. She's the second largest copper repoussé sculpture in the country or in the world. First largest being the Statue of Liberty. She's supposed to be holding it on her finger, but I couldn't actually hang anything off her. Oh um, but that was my first job out of college. So there's the bike back on the ground, and so the same like hand painted letter form stuff skills. Um, and then for a long time, I've been doing these sequin covered lawn ornaments and duck decoys. So once again, it's like small, small ephemeral multiples creating what I make. Um, there should be several of those. So that's a, this is a widgeon. Um, and then for a commission, I got to do a salmon that was about this big. Um, so it was a huge taxidermy salmon, one of the largest <laughs> salmon ever caught in the Columbia. Um, but it was damaged, so they, they paid me to do this. <laughs> they'd, they'd broken it. And I also make, this is a backdrop that was made out of hand cut um, wallpaper. So it's, you'll see it quite large. But this, so and then we're back to letter form again. This was a piece that I made in conjunction with that skull is about this big. Um, and so you can see that this is like 120 running feet. Um, these are felt cut letter work that I then um, hand sewed on. Like for penance. Well, these are all ironic place names. The, my collaborator can't spell. Um, but he has a, a, a memory for place that, um, so there's a detail of the skull. So those are all bottle caps. He has a detail, like a memory for places and what people call places that is amazing. So he and I made these, so there's all like, they're all the nicknames for places. The orange curtain is the, the boundary line between two counties in California where the alcohol gets cheaper. Um, Vietnam, Flavorville, uh, Fort Ord, Planet Ord, Wallace Squared. So those just keep. I like the Schittsburg. I think Schittsburg. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we also, whenever we show, we try to throw in a pennant from the local area. So this is at Cal State Long Beach. Atlanta. You can't really see it, but this is bipolar Portland. Um, so yeah. So that was 
that's an ongoing work. Like I'll probably be showing that this year a couple times. Um, and so that's my front yard. But so this is like back to the sign painting thing. So I do large like installation works in like my yard, other people's yards. So those both happen to be in mine. That's a labyrinth that you can walk around. Is that in your yard too? That's my front yard. <laughs> it doesn't look this good right now. It takes I a lot of know. maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's the cherry tree again. You can kind of see the scale of it because those are bookshelves. And as you will see, I have a lot of books. We have a lot of stuff at my house. It's what ridiculous. What you can see about that tree, though, is that there are layers. So she's cut out yeah. these multiple layers of the wallpaper to build it up. So it has like this three-dimensional effect to it as well. And then I was actually a fiber, I ended up being a fibers major because they had the most floor space so I could work big there. So I make things like large animals out of fabric. And this is actually a costume piece so I can wear it and it walks around with me. It, um, and I do a lot of costuming work. I actually have a small piece with me. But I, I love to work with ephemeral things and to hand out stuff, and that's a big part of what I do. And right now I'm actually working on pinatas, which you'll see in a second. This guy, actually, remember the boat with the bottles? When he saw the boat with the bottles, he burst into tears and like became my best friend. And so I, like, I particularly delight in providing him with toys. So this is his lunch bag. <laughs> that's Michael DeForest, he's amazing. Um, now we're, oh, that one's out of order. Now we're getting into what we're actually gonna work on, which is letter form. And I didn't mean to be a printmaker. It just kind of happens. It's something I end up doing a lot. Um, so I work with uh, actual presses and letterpress material and type. So I think that one's just out of order. Here's what I'm working on right now. I'm building pinatas, huge pinata sharks. Um, this is actually in a print shop, but that's just coincidental. So this is in Leslie Groves, where we smashed it on Christmas, the first one. So. You can kind of see the scale of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a fun. Um, but to support that work, I did a bunch of signs um, for wall work and in the display. So you can see those signs back behind a, the shark talking about like different buzzwords or keywords around that. And that was basically just a proposal for like what I could do with a larger installation, which I, it turns out I'm not doing, but I actually really enjoy doing the signs more than I'm enjoying doing the sharks. Um, so that's my table. This is my ephemera that I'm giving away. I'm giving away that postcard, that postcard, buttons, playing cards, calendars, and there's my collection of bottle caps. And then here's my smashed up and baby shark. So, um, and then we're getting now back, sorry, the Fête de la Critique thing was supposed to be here. So this is a residency that I just did in, in North Carolina, which is part of how I support, how I make things, is that I travel places and work there and then you know, build my portfolio that way. So this is my press. This is called a Vandercook. They used to be used to you put the whole sheet of a newspaper laid out in lead type, and you'd proof it to see if everything was spelled right. Mm -hmm. And that was all it was used for. They would run all day long. The ink would be on them. People would throw their type on, run it, see if it was right, go back, correct it, bring it back, run it again. So these are not what the newspaper was printed on, just to proof the newspaper. Um, so these are now being used mostly for art all over the country. Um, and they're slowly dying off, like they're breaking down and you know being decommissioned. So there's fewer and fewer of them. Mine was named Wallace. Um, and on Wallace I printed, these are large pieces of wood type, and that print's actually going to be over there and you'll see it. So this is all set up in the press bed, so there's circus. And then this stuff is all called furniture, and these are my little rubber rollers. And those have ink on them, and you go one way, and it prints, and you go the other way, and it inks. You go one way, and it prints, and it goes the other way, and it inks. And by the end of the day, you're really, really, really tired, because <laughs> you've been <laughs> doing this for hours. And I print, in two weeks, I printed thousands of these fish. Um, among other projects, which you'll get to see. And so that's this is my furniture, here's my fish, here's my ink. Um, and then I started putting the fish around the print shop. So there were these enormous schools of fish. Um, this is actually a type cabinet, which we'll, we'll come back to a little later. Um, so they were interacting with other people's artwork. You can see the reflection across the room. So this is like one person's body of artwork and then my body of artwork sort of kind of came over and covered hers for a couple days and then it moved, moved along. 
on its way. Um, this is this is what a neat printmaker's area looks like. Like all those, everything's nicely laid out. This is not me. This is the person across from me. And then mine was looking like that. <laughs> so, um, oh, really big. So the original, what we're going to be kind of talking about. And I don't know if I can make that smaller. Um, let me just show you. So. This is what a Gutenberg press looked like. The first, the press that pressed the Gutenberg Bible, which was the first of its kind in so many ways. But one thing was that you could only have a small amount of letters and you could move them, which was called movable type. And each, um, each typeface, oh, now it's going to be precise. Ooh, that's a horrible sound. Uh, let's see. So this is in a foundry, each one of these is one font of a typeface. A typeface is the whole thing, and then like each size is a font, each italic, each everything is a font. So this is all the fonts in like Bodoni typeface or something. Um, Can you guys imagine printing like that where you had to put every little bit into place? <laughs> and it, it's, it's actually really restive and enjoyable once you get good at Unless it. Unless you have a newspaper deadline. Yeah. <laughs> or any deadline. Like, yeah, it's... I can see doing it for pleasure, yes. But, you know, one of the things about it is really nice is it's solid. It's actually there. Like, yeah. you can't exactly mess it up. You can't lose it. It doesn't right. just it doesn't disappear. disappear and go away for you. So there's... So, kind of bad picture. There's, so this is what I was saying. This is an entire typeface. All of those are the fonts. You lift this thing up here so that you can see, you can kind of see that there's letters. This is called the California typeface, which is what everybody uses now, but which is actually a reduced version that people moved from the East Coast to California. Um, and so, you know, the letters aren't, they're all squished together by how many letters you need. Like, you need a lot of E's, so they have a big box. But you don't need a lot of periods, so they have a small box. And one way, one thing that I've thought is hilarious for the last couple of years, is I've seen so many people with the California time case on their arm. Oh, this person, this image didn't have the letters, but so that you can sit there while you're setting type and look at your arm. Is that tattooed on? Or yeah, it's just a tattoo. <laughs> yeah. um, so they tattoo themselves so they can work more efficiently. Work more efficiently with this. Take one. That's, really That's a recent thing. I mean, <laughs> but like, you, you watch people set type on old YouTube videos and they're literally setting type as fast as I type. Like, they are so quick and then you, yeah, it's, it's really cool to watch. Okay, um, we will go home and watch that. Type yeah. Setting on YouTube. So, this is a tied up bunch of type. These are all the spacing that you have to put in to make the type all fit together because it's actually like you're building with blocks. So you put in a lead, and then you put in your stuff, and then you put in another piece of lead, and then you so it's really, and so you get to like, you put it's in coppers and brasses, and it's all like already the right size. And so it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous, but you can actually decide like how far away you want your R from your S, or your F from your T, or your, I mean, you can get really into the minutia of it. Um, so that was all lead type. This is wood type which I have some of that. So this is somebody trying to set up a circle without using any of that furniture or any of those spaces with just just type. I don't know how they would actually print this, but this is, um, I've seen that done a couple times. Um, this is a building which is now being decommissioned, but this was Hamilton Wood Type Museum. And wood type used to be used to print billboards. So you had seven foot tall letters, and you had the whole set of seven foot tall letters in this gigantic warehouse. Um, and you guys will get to, I have some Hamilton stuff for you to see. I have a button right there. I just had a you can't time. stand it, can you? <laughs> um, so, so wood type is still being made, so is lead type, but just not very much, um, or very frequently, I should say. Still quite a lot, especially with like, they just printed the first typeface of Cherokee ever printed. <laughs> um, so that, like things like that are still getting made for people to use. This, I'll you know, skip that one, get back to it. This, if you can, can you kind of see that? Can you kinda, this is a press, this is a gigantic piece of stone. And that's how you used to make 
lithography, which is how you print posters, is you would have this big piece of stone and you would um, clean it off in a sink and then you would put oil onto it and etch it, which is lith lithographic etching. And you'll get to see a bunch of that. Um, but this is what we do now. These are rubber rollers, which are light sensitive. And you make, uh, you send a digital file normally, and it makes a roller that prints at whatever you know, size you want is the width of the roller. And it prints you know, each color individually after making a photograph plate a on a roller. Or is it actually a thin plate? It's a thin attach, plate that yeah, is attached to the roller. Thing, Excuse me, yeah. You can see it. Yeah. Uh, it's really, really cool and really, really easy compared to all of these. Yeah. Because these, you can put the type right on there. You can, you know, so it's, um, and a lot of the stuff that I'm going to bring up to you, it's like, it is nostalgic technology, but it's not necessarily better. It's just different. Um, and though I may have a bias towards it. So this is, um, this is one of the, this is Durr, uh, uh, his image of a rhinoceros, where he added things to the rhinoceros that he thought should be there. Um, and this is a woodcut, which is, we're going to do things probably work similarly to that. So you can get, it's, it's small, it's like this big. Um, you can get fairly detailed with it. Bad image of a woodcut, bad image of a woodcut. People are still doing woodcuts, and that's what I'm kind of getting around to. Um, a lot because it's still a very fast, dirty way to make imagery that is, you know, it's an object. You make a wood block, you, ha you carry the wood block around, and it never disappears. And so you can. It has this quality to it, I think, that you yeah. can't recreate. You know, no, linoleum and woodcut are very close, but you can definitely tell the difference between them. Um, but also, it's, I mean, that's the thing is you always have that block to make a new one, you don't lose that file. You know, it's it's always there, and after you've made it, it's you know you can keep reprinting it pretty much indefinitely. So and so this cute little old lady, her name is Suko. She's one of the most like amazing animal rights activists in the world, and she pretty much only works with uh, linoleum and woodcut, and she does illustrations for like the New Yorker and everything else. But they are sometimes are so remarkably graphic. Like she will break into slaughterhouses and take photos and make wood cuts and I mean she she gets away with it because she's so little and like old looking and she you know, she built her entire interior of her house with her old wood blocks you know so she's oh, made wow. hundreds of them and so it's cool. talking about just that as a viable way but now we'll get a suco c-o-e and yeah, she's like she came to speak to my graduate school. She actually brought like stacks of prints, and she's like, "I need money. <laughs> but I'll sell these to you for ten bucks each." You know, and she went home with a couple grand. Wow. You know, it was just like, "Bam, so easy." Um, so yeah, so that's kind of that's the the fast and dirty talk there. We can actually go look at objects over yes, here. Yes, let's let's. So.